it's your boy Bill. Got one for y'all today. Y'all know I had to put on for that D. You know what I'm saying? If you know, then you know. And I got Bill on the side of <laughs> um Patreon jumping, got something new on there. I got a new Instagram. The one I had, they uh they wasn't letting me monetize my reels because of a, a joke I made on there a while back. And it, they just like like canceled my page from it. My page still up, but they saying I can't monetize it because of a joke I made. And uh, they just not feeling that. A long, long time ago. So I just made a new one. The other one, I'm taking it down. My new Instagram is Bill underscore Feezy. And that's the new Instagram. Y'all go follow me. I got that merch on there. This shirt I got on, I was actually walking through the mall. And it was a dude and a girl, and they was like, hey, bro, support us. We got our own merch. So I just bought a T-shirt from them. What I didn't know is the damn T-shirt costed $100. But I just bought it, just support this little hustle, you know what I'm saying? Y'all support me. I just wanted to support somebody. So let's get in it today, man. You know, in the prison, the officers, or the staff member in general, but the officers is supposed to be... Some of the people, like not some of them, they're supposed to be the people that you can go to if you got an issue or if you if you scared for your life, you're supposed to be able to go to an officer and, you know, talk to them like, look, man, woo -woo 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 -woo. that's how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be there to help you, you know what I'm saying, protect you. But not some of them do, but I'm going to just tell you a situation where <clears throat> sometimes at certain prisons, that can be the worst mistake a person on the inside will ever make. See, it's like this. I think sometimes when, when staff members get caught up doing stuff like, oh, they bring in, they were bringing in contraband, or oh, they had personal dealings with an inmate, and people be like, oh, they did that? Oh, they should use it. I think what, what a lot of people fail to realize is, them correctional officers, folk, is just regular people, just like me and you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they literally, there's no real deal, serious, big time requirement that I feel like it should be. Because when you when you in a field like that, you know, a lot of decisions you make could cost or save somebody life. You know what I'm saying? And you just, I feel like you just got to have good judgment on, you know, people in certain situations and stuff like that. When the requirements to work in a Georgia prison is have a GED or equivalent, which is a high school diploma. Don't have no felony. Um, and you got to pass, oh, of course, you got to be at least 18 years old. And you got to pass something that they got called post-examination. And after me speaking to Plenty of officers I knew over the years that post-examination is easy. It's nothing. It's nothing. They they asking you simple, basic, damn near middle school questions. And then you got to go out there and get physical. You got to run around the prison one time. You got to do 15, 20 punk ass push-ups. Like, who can't do that? Like, really, who can't do that? Anybody can do that. You know what I'm saying? My little 15-year-old brother can do that. So, I feel like they put just anybody in position to, you know, uphold such a strong responsibility. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be like that. So that's just, that's that's what they do. But I'm going to tell you, like, I I was at, where I was at? I was at Riverbend. No, I was at Johnson. I was at Johnson State Prison. And, the, like, one of the first times... I started like dealing with a mule. It was a little female. We were around about the same age. I probably had about like a year or two. So we talking and stuff. So we finally got to the point where she's about to like officially bring me something. So, you know, I'm loving this part. This is my favorite part. And um, uh, she did it. Everything went through good, probably like once or twice. And then the third time, I was trying to get her to do something different. 
like bring something different. So she was like, well, my cousin work here too. And he said he was trying to get some money too. So if you can, uh, you know, we could both do it and we could get some money like that. Everybody can get some money. So, you know, I'm like, hell yeah, we're going to do that because that's just going to give me more money. Now, that's another dangerous thing about the prison with the officers. Damn near everybody related. All the towns where the prisons is at is these little small country towns. Everybody know everybody type towns. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn near everybody be either related, friend. You know how many people I done seen their cousins, baby mama, or brother. And the danger is, just say it's something unjust going on with this officer. So I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm scared for my life. I go try to consult this officer and he like, oh, okay, okay. But what I just told him about was with his cousin. You know what I'm saying? So it can go all kind of ways, but I'm going to just tell you my experience. So I'm dealing with old girl. We're kicking it, you know. So she like, she told me what she told me about her cousin. So I'm like, yeah, we could do that. I'm straight with that. So she called me on three-way one day. She said, I just gave him your number, but I'm about to call you on three-way first, so it won't nothing be awkward. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. So she called me on three-way with her cousin. Um, I know who he is. You know, we just talking for a minute. He like, yeah, bro, I ain't trying to be dealing with everybody. I knew she was dealing with somebody doing something, man. You know, I just told her, put me on who you dealing with because I know it's safe, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, that was up. So we went to talking about the specifics on what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, all this and that. <clears throat> so everything cool. So we probably been working with her cousin now for about a good month, at least two, three times a week, about a good month. One day, I called her when she got off work. She was mad. I was like, what's up, baby? She was so mad. She was blowed. She was going in. She was talking crazy about a dude that, now she worked, most of the time, she worked in the mental health dorm. At this prison, they had mental health level three. And they usually get away with just about anything because they, they, they labeled damn that crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, it was a dude in there that she say was cussing her out. She said he was cussing her out and that he was jacking on her. And I know I told y'all before that in prison, jacking is a real big thing. Like a dude a literally look at a female officer while he masturbate. And in his mind, he going to walk away and say, yeah, I just smashed that. I just clapped that. You know what I'm saying? And that's really the lingo. Like, like somebody will come up to you and be like, but you hit that? The dude might be like, yeah, but like, it good. Like they really in their mind, they really think. They just really hit some. So some officers is with it, some is not. So she's not with it. So she had, she was telling me she ain't with it and stuff. So she was like, yeah, he just got me so mad, gonna disrespect me like that. But she was saying way worse words than what I'm saying right now. He was everything but a child of God. So I'm just telling you, you know, like, baby, don't even worry about that. You know, don't even worry about it. Just, you know, let it roll off your shoulders like water. Don't even it is what it is. So, like the next day go by, she still talking about it. She wasn't even at work this day. She was off and talking about this one particular dude all day. So I'm like, damn. And I'm like, because as a, as a female officer, bro, you're going to get cussed out. You're going to get dudes jacking on you. You going you might get feces or urine thrown on you. There is no telling what might happen. So it's like dude cussing you out, jacking or something. I mean, you got things you can do about that that's in your, you know, job description. So I don't even understand why it's such a big issue to you. And she said, "Man, I won't do bust. I won't do bust." Now you know she talking about she won't do bust. Y'all know what that means. She wants somebody to hit them with the ratchet or hit them with the candy bar. Because I know y'all like that little word right there. So she wants somebody to poke dude up. So I'm like, hold on, baby. Listen, so I'm, listen I'm trying to explain to her that you can't respond. If you, if you respond to every single situation like that, 
when a dude cuss you out or do anything, if you respond with trying to get somebody to bust them, you're going to be trying to get everybody at the prison bus because that's just what comes with the job. That's going to happen. She wasn't trying to hear none of that. She was like, man, I won't do bust, man. I won't do bust. I want somebody to bust him and they got to do it while I'm at work because I want to hear it when they call the code on the radio. I want to see that walking past me leaking, pulled out. I want to see it. So I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So I just say that, you know, I'm feeling like we just getting off of it. So I go talk about something else. I done kind of got her calmed down. I'm talking to her about her family and stuff, her little daughter. Everything good. Like two days went by. So this one particular day, she supposed to bring the stuff. So I go to where it's supposed to be at. It ain't there. So I made my way to get to her post where she works at. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And she was like, oh, I got it right here. So I had to wait till it clear out because people was around. Then I finally got it. I'm like, why the hell you ain't put it where it's supposed to go? She was like, nah, I was trying to get your attention. Why you ain't do what you was supposed to do? So I was like, what was I supposed to do? And she was like, I told you I won't do bust. I was like, man, you still on this? She was like, yeah, I'm still on it. He disrespected me and I want him bust. Simple as that. She was like, now, if you don't get him bust, I'm not bringing nothing no more. So... I'm like, man, I'm not trying to get no dude bust because you mad he cussed you out when I know a thousand more dudes going to cuss you out. That's just part of the job. You know you doing something. You ain't got no business doing no way. So if I was you, I just, they cuss me out. All right, whatever. Or cuss them back out and keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see the big, the big issue that's so strong with that. So... Later on, when I'm going back to my little work area, her cousin just so happened to be the officer working on the post up there. He came in like two, three hours late. So I got what I'm supposed to get from him. And he went to talking to me about old dude. So I'm expressing my logic to him. Like, bro, listen, if this happened, okay, what are we going to do about the next dude? And then the next dude. And then the next dude. You mean to tell me you just finna be right here trying to get everybody stabbed up? I'm not about to be doing that. I'm not about to be paying. I'm not about to even be participating in that. Because it's crazy. Only time I really like to get on that type of timing is when you done put me on that type of timing. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Either you, either I feel like you finna try to hurt me or, or... You you just straight up trying me, straight up disrespecting me. Then I'm going to get on that type of time. But you just talking about he cussed you out. Man, I'm not about to be trying to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, oh, dude finna be feeling how I'm feeling. So dude was like, bro, end of the day, he tried my cousin. I want him bust too. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, bro, you on this too? Like. We got to, it, it got to make sense some type of way, bro. It ain't making no sense. You know what I'm saying? And um, he wasn't, he wasn't trying to hear what I was saying either. So, you know, the day went by. I told him, all right. I'm like, all right. So the day went by. I talked to her later on when she got off work. Total other person. She's talking about somebody totally different now. Yeah, we got to argue, and he told me he'll spit in my mother's face. I want him bust. So I'm like, do you see what I'm saying? You see the way it's going, baby. It's going to keep happening like that. You're going to want the whole prison bust. Just let them do them. Keep getting your money, getting rich on these folks. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't trying to hear it, so she told me. She was like, man, it ain't my last time telling you, bro. If you don't get them two folks bust, then it's just over with. I'm not dealing with you no more. We ain't even doing none of this no more. You know what I'm saying? Tight stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So I tell her, but I told her, okay, this time. I told her, I was like, you know what? All right, I'm going to handle it. I'm going to get it done. So what I do is, see, I work a detail where I can move around a whole lot. So the first dude, because he about, he, he about slow for real. So the first dude, I caught him out there on the walk. I pulled up on him. I was like, I just told him, like, hey, bro, whatever you got going on, you be disrespecting such and such. But leave that alone, bro, because I got something going on. And 
you know, what you be doing kind of getting in the way of what I'm doing. So he pretty much was like, all right, bro, you know, he like, I ain't studying her. She she just got all that mouth. She got all that mouth. I'm like, yeah, I know it, bro, but just let her have it, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he like, all right, cool. So the second dude I pull up on and I told him, hey, bro, oh, girl, say you been disrespecting her, talking about you a spit in her face, blase, squase. I say, bro, I got something going on, bro. Leave that alone. Matter of fact, I really want you to go apologize to her because, like, bro, you going to mess up what I got going on. Now, I was pretty known around this prison, so they knew, like, them particular ones, they didn't know me personally, but they knew of me. When I came around, they knew who I was. They knew what I did. They knew I would get active if I had to. They knew this. So, um... He was like, he basically told me he's not apologizing to her, but, you know, he ain't going to say nothing to her no more. I had to respect that. I can't make, I mean, I could, but I ain't known all that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, bro, cool. I can respect that. So he said he's going to leave it alone. He said he's going to leave it alone. So when I caught, when I talked back to the old girl, what I told her was, yeah, I got it lined up. My, my folks who going to do it, he just told me, give them a couple of days. And uh, he going to get it done. So I just said that to push it off a little bit so I could still get my bread. And hopefully when a couple of days go by and do stay out her way, she don't still be feeling the same type of way. So a couple of days go by. I go back up to the detail. The cousin, he working behind like a glass in a booth. He go to hitting the glass. Do, 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 do. When I look up at him, he doing like this, but it's like he ain't never did that before. Like even when he bring me contraband, he just put it where it's supposed to go and I go get it. He ain't never went to beating on no glass. So I'm like, first thing on my mind, I'm thinking about, oh girl, I'm thinking she done got caught up or something. My heart done went to beating. So I run over there to the glass. I'm like, what's up? He had to pop the door to let me through another door, like a booth. And then I could talk to him directly through a little flap. The flap like come out of the booth. It's like that long. And the purpose of it is if the officer inside the booth and you ask for like a Tylenol or something, they could give you a Tylenol, stick it through the flap, or they could give you like if you need the paperwork to get you some laundry or medical paperwork, they stick it through the flap. That's the purpose of it. So I put my face down in the flap. I'm like, what's up, bro? So he like, man. You know, old dude, the second dude. So I'm like, yeah, what about him? He say, man, he just pulled up on the lieutenant this morning and told him that you pulled up on him and told him you got something going on with old girl and him disrespecting her is getting in your way. So, like, he really just, like, trying to tell on you, trying to get you knocked out the box, trying to get you out the way. So I'm like, What? So the lieutenant and the dude is like this. So it's my girl, her cousin, and then her cousin and the lieutenant is like this. So the lieutenant didn't even report it. He was just like, he told dude. So dude, I guess told, the, like when the lieutenant was telling him, I guess dude told the lieutenant like, yeah, don't my fault. Be of my fault. Don't even, you know what I'm saying? The lieutenant just was like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, bro, you ain't even had no business talking to him, you know what I'm saying? In the first place. He like, man, you supposed to handle that business. He was like, so now that dude done went and just straight up tried to tell, he was like, bro, that business got to get handled. And why you at that one, you need to go on handle that one. And this is my last time telling you, bro, or we through. We ain't dealing with you no more, period. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dang, they done put me in a real crazy situation. Because it's like, to be honest, when it comes to that type of stuff, it's like, I only like to participate when... When I know I'm in the right, you know what I'm saying? Or if you push it, if you push me there, 
then I'm ready to go all out. You know what I'm saying? I done had a few times where I was on some young, crazy stuff. But at this particular time during my bid, I just didn't feel like, you know, I wasn't on that. I was just, I was trying to do things different. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm placed in a situation where I got to get this business handled. So I'm like, you know what it is, what it is. The first dude, I let him, the very first dude that was disrespecting the old girl, I let somebody else handle that. And then the second dude that I talked to, just on the strength that he went and told the police on me, I'm going to have to handle that myself because it's personal now. You know what I'm saying? I want to deal with it personally myself. So I talked to one of my little guys that I know uh, uh, get active and handle business. And I told him, like, look, I'm going to need you to do this. And then... I told him around the same time, like, we just gonna try to be out on a walk maybe during child or something like that about a uh, week and hundred that. So he like, all right, cool. So I had it pushed off for like two days from the day I talked to him. So I noticed when I went back, like when the day was over with, I went back to the dorm, I called old girl. She ain't answered the phone. You know what I'm saying? I know she right outside in the parking lot, just got off work. So I called her probably three, four times that day, sent her a text like, hey, what's up? I'm just trying to make sure everything gravy with this business. So she ain't answer. So I called her cousin. It took him three calls to finally answer. That's different. That's something they never do, ever. They never not answer or never take that long to answer the phone. So I talked to the cousin. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? I've been calling no girl. He talking about, oh, I don't know. I think she at her mama house. What does... What, what the, what her being at her mama house got to do with her not answering the phone? He like, nah, she probably just don't want to talk about, you know, no business or nothing at her mama house. I say, bro, I talked to this girl outside of business. Like, I done went to sleep on the phone with her a hundred times. That don't matter if she's at her mama house. I know if she around her mama not to talk about contraband in the prison. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, I don't know. I'll try to hit her up and see. So I'm like, yeah, do that for me, bro. So... She ended up calling me late that night. I'm talking about I was damn near dozing off and I was slipping because I ain't even put my phone up. So she called me late that night. So I'm like, man, what's up? What you had going on? So she like, oh, no, nah, I was just, you know, uh, she, she really couldn't even give me no real answer. She was just BSing around. So I'm like, man, you got that? So she was like, yeah, I got it. I'm like, all right, cool. That's all I really cared about at the moment. So I asked, the, I called the cousin back. I'm like, bro, we, everything straight, everything gravy. So he was like, yeah, bro, everything going to be straight. I'm like, all right, cool. So the next day, I pull up to my little detail area. The cousin, because he, he worked closer to me. I get to the cousin first. I'm like, what's up? I look where I'm supposed to look. It ain't there. I'm like, what's up, bro? He was like, oh, man, when we pulled up this morning, they had the dogs out front. Man, they was searching officers and stuff. So I just left that junk in my car. He was like, I'm going to try to go back out there and get it. So I'm like, I, I mean, I got to respect it. I mean, there's nothing I can say. I got to respect it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I get my little ice cooler. Like I'm about to go get some ice and I slide to the dorm where old girl working at. Go straight to the area I'm supposed to go to. It wasn't there. Now I'm about pissed off. I'm like, man, what's up, man? So she going to tell me, oh, when I pulled up this morning, it was looking kind of strange. The lieutenants and stuff, they was all just looking at us crazy. So I just left that stuff in my car. I'm like, wasn't no, wasn't no search going on out there? They didn't have dogs and all that searching y'all. She said, nah, it just was looking real funny this morning. So I'm like, what the feezy? This man just told me. That they had the canines out there sniffing cars and searching officers. She just told me they didn't have none of that out there. They just was looking kind of funny. So now I instantly know it's game. It's some type of game going on here somewhere. It's game. Somebody. One thing I know for a fact, somebody lying. Somebody lying. And it's some type of game being played. But as I'm sitting here trying to think, I'm like, damn, you know what I actually go to thinking? I'm like, they cutting me off until that business get handled. Because I told her before 
all right, I'm about to get it handled in a few days, and a few days went by, and it didn't. So now I told her again, like, yeah, in two days, that business going to get handled. So I'm like, they cutting me off because the business ain't getting handled. Now, the business was supposed to get handled the next day. But now I'm like, man, I need I need my paperwork. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, it is what it is, bro. Hey, I'm trying to be Mr. Good Guy. Hey, listen, man, it is what it is. So I told dude, the cousin, I'm like, hey, man, I'm about to go back to the dorm. If anybody asks, just tell them uh, I wasn't feeling good or something. But I told him, I'm like, man, I'm about to go slide back to the dorm and see what's up with their business. So he was like, all right, say less. So I'm leaving. I'm going to the dorm. So as soon as I get to the dorm, getting ready to go inside my dorm for the other dude that I hollered at, my, my people, to bust the first dude, when I get to the dorm, I hear the office, well, on the radio, like, you got officers in different places, but you can hear it on the radio, the officer that's right there at the door in my dorm getting ready to let me in the dorm, they go to calling a cold. They go to screaming on the radio, a cold, a cold. It's old girl that I deal with on the radio screaming the damn cold in her dorm. At that moment, I didn't even think twice about it. I'm like, uh, you know, it's a cold. Mental health dorm. Whatever. So I go in the dorm real quick. I'm just finna go try to holler at dude and slide back out. So I holler at dude. He like, yeah, man, well, it's whatever with me. So I'm like, man, come on, bro. Let's slide out here. So we walking back to the front of the dorm and another cold go to screaming on the radio. So I look out the window. You can see officers taking off running, like going in this direction. So I'm like, damn, them folks lit today. So old girl that just let me in the dorm, go to screaming, emergency lockdown, emergency lockdown. So I'm like, damn, we're about to get locked down. But I'm like, you know, it, it's probably, you know, it's probably, it's probably meant to happen that way or whatever the case is. So I asked her, I'm like, what we locking down for? She said a couple people done got stabbed up, you know, these crazy people. Woo -woo -woo -woo. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. So we, we go in the room, we get locked down. They got us locked down for probably about, Four, five hours. They let us back out. Now, when they let us out, man, it's probably like, it's probably like pushing 3 p.m. Now, 3.34 is usually the time I be getting off the work detail, but sometimes I stay over, you know, if they position, if they put old girl up in my little area or not. Sometimes I stay over on purpose. So, Um, okay, so when I, it's, it's almost three o'clock, something like that. It's around about two, three o'clock. It's close to the time I usually get off the work detail anyway. So I tell the officer, I'm like, hey, let me run back up here. I got to finish cleaning these bathrooms. So, and I got to make their coffee and stuff, the administrator. So she like, all right, go ahead, but you ain't got but a few minutes. So I slide up there. Now, you know, when I get up there, I'm looking around. I can't really see, like, I can't see nobody or nothing, but I definitely see a whole bunch of blood on the sidewalk, right? So I'm like, I can see it like up there close towards the medical area. I'm going straight medical like this way. But when I look, I see it. It's like, look, it's a nice look, you know what I'm saying, on the sidewalk. So I'm like, damn, somebody got flipped. So I go in, the, the cousin is the one who supposed to pop me in through the door to let me in. He got to like, hit a button or whatever he got to do from inside the booth to open the door that I could get in through. Man, I'm sitting outside this door like 10 minutes. Dude is kicked back on the phone, but I done made eye contact with him two, three times. So it ain't like he don't see me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking in my head like, bro, what the hell? What, like, what do they really got going on, bro? So I go to hitting the glass like, bro, let me in, bro. So he finally popped the door. He told me, oh, my bad, man. I was on the phone with my girl. I wasn't even paying no attention. You know what I'm saying? But his energy, I noticed it instantly was different from when I left. He seemed real jolly now. So I'm like, what the hell happened anyway? He like, well, what? I'm like, with the emergency count. He was like, emergency count? He trying to play stupid now. Bro, you as an officer. You right here in main control. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm like, I'm talking about with the emergency count with the, uh, why we just had got locked down. And he talking about, oh, I don't know. They say, uh, 
say some some people got put on the door or something. I think somebody got stabbed. But it just ain't sitting right with me. Because, bro, you know better than that. You know better than that just like I know better than that. You know exactly what the hell just happened, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I see some blood out there on the sidewalk. So he was like, uh, I don't know, bro. I think, I think somebody did get stabbed, though. I wasn't even really paying attention. I'm on the phone with old girl. He lying. You're the main control officer. You the one that do all the main calls and stuff over the radio to like let people know, oh, well, this is going on at the prison or this is going on. Or like if an officer not answering their radio, they'll call main control and be like, hey, call that officer because the main control radio, that it like go everywhere. So you might not have no good connection on this radio, but if I call main control and be like, hey, holler at officer such and such, and then you call from your radio, Man, man control knows everything going on. That's basically the point I'm trying to make. Man control knows everything going on. So I'm like, all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he he want to play crazy. So after I get done doing a little work, I go towards that side of the compound where they uh where I seen the blood at, like over there close by to the medical unit. So I go over there, now the officers that's working over there, they automatically try to tell me, uh-uh, get back. Like, they don't want nobody over there. So I tell the lady, the what do they call them people? The um, the unit manager of a medical, she was a unit manager over the whole medical unit. I told her, I'm like, hey, let me help y'all clean this stuff up. Now, I'm already an upfront orderly. Everybody know me. So she was like, all right, cool. She was like, yeah, you can help clean up. So they gave me some little gear, you know, a little scrub brush. It's probably like three, four dudes out there doing it. So I'm asking them like, bro, what happened? You know what I'm saying? So they like, oh, man, such and such got flipped. Man, dude hit him all in the face. And then such and such right behind him, man, he got beat by like two people with locks. Both of the people is the two people that old girl and her cousin been trying to get me to do something to. Both of them. So I'm like, oh, yeah? So they like, yeah, bro, it's ugly, it's crazy, whoop the whoop the whoop. So we cleaned up. Once the unit manager kind of push off and go on back up front, I shoot down to the building, old girl working in. I'm like, man, pop that door. She usually pop the door as soon as she see me. She seen me and didn't even pop the door. I'm like, bro, pop the door, bro. So she finally popped the door, let me in. So I go in there, the dorm locked down, but I go up to like the little front desk. I'm like, bro, what do y'all got going on? She want to play stupid. Talking about what you mean? I'm like, man, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Same two people y'all been trying to tell me to hit. Just got hit. And then today, y'all magically didn't bring my stuff today. When I'm telling y'all, everything going to be straight tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, man, I just ain't got time for no game. I told you, if you supposed to be my dude, ain't no way you finna let no other dude disrespect me. You ain't even supposed to let it go on that many days. She said, really, to be honest, if a female disrespected you, she said, man, I don't care nothing about this job. I don't care nothing about none of that. I just crash out on the strength that you my dude and I love you and I respect you. I ain't finna let nobody disrespect you. I said, so you wanted me to just say Bump everything I'm doing, what I got going on, what I'm working towards, and just crash out and go hit it. She said, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. I said, okay, so since it didn't happen like that, and you was impatient, too impatient, so you went and had somebody else do it, and then brought somebody else some stuff you ain't had no business brain. So she go to looking out, she go to act like she looking at some paperwork, talking about, hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I just, I'm talking to her, I finally got her opening up and talking back to me more. So she tell me what she did, you know what I'm saying? And then she unfolded something to me that was so crazy. She told me the dude who did the first one, well, she say both, all right, it was like two or three different dudes that did the attacks. The first dude, he just got stabbed by one dude. And then the second dude, he got beat with locks by two dudes. So I asked her like, did any of them dudes get jammed up or whatever? She tell me, nah. Uh, and she got to telling me who the dudes is. One of the dudes just so happened to be one of the dudes that's out there on that little crew cleaning up that I was just a part of. 
We was just out there cleaning up together. So I'm like, what? How he out here doing this? So she like, he was just smooth with it. You know what I'm saying? And then just so he could stay in the knowing of what's going on and making sure they not suspicious of him. Right after he handled it, and I guess washed his hands and stuff, he hurried up and slid out and was like telling the unit manager he wanted to help her clean up. So I'm like, what? But I mean, it ain't it ain't like super surprising because I done, you know, I done seen stuff like that before where somebody be smooth enough to do something like that. So we just talking and talking and she she will not make eye contact with me, period. So I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? I just get a funny feeling. She not trying to make eye contact. She move, you know, she just acting kind of funny and stuff. So I'm like, well, what, 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 there's something else going on or whatever? She won't look at me. She talking about, um, I just, I just wish I wouldn't have never did that. I should have just listened to you. It really ain't even that serious for real. Then she looked up at me. Her eyes was kind of watery. So I'm like, you was just so gangster and just wanted this to happen. What, what you getting all soft and crazy for now? Then she looked back, like looking out the window to the dorm. And then she do that like another time or two while we talking. So I'm like, what, what's going on, man? She like, nothing, man. You might need to, uh, you might just need to try to stay around here, see if you could clean up in here or something. Now that threw me for a big loop. I need to stay in here, see if I could clean up in here. What do you mean? They already assigned me to clean up out there. I just came in here to kick it. Would you talk to you for a minute to see what's really going on? Now, I'm like, I'm going to holler at you, though. You know what I'm saying? Just answer the phone when I call you, man. But when I try to leave out the dawn, she's like, hold on, Bill. And keep trying to, like, stop me and talk to me about a bunch of BS. So I'm like, what's up? She's like, man, just I just don't want to be in here by myself. They locked down. I'm just bored. You know what I'm saying? It ain't add up, though. So I'm like, bro, I'm gone, bro. Because if the unit manager see me in here for too long, it's going to get suspicious. What is you doing in there for so long? So I'm like, I got to go. So I get ready to slide out the door and she don't pop the door on the little booth. I'm like, man, pop the door and let me out, man. So she like, man, just wait. Like, it was like a panic in her voice. I'm like, what is you, what is wrong? Like, what's going on, bro? And bro, she started crying. And she said, man, I was so mad. And I told my cousin, she said, I ain't gonna lie. I was talking bad about you because you had me so mad and you acting like you don't want to handle that business. She said, so I told my cousin, let's just pay somebody else to do it. I said, okay, that's common sense. That's obvious. Duh, already, we already just got to the bottom of that. I know y'all did that. That's why I said, just call, answer the phone when I call you later. She was like, nah, but, you know, my cousin went on some extra stuff and was saying all kind of extra stuff. I was like, okay, and? And she was like, she looked back outside and she was like, and? I think he might have told dude to get you too. That's why he ran back out the dorm so quick because he know you was going to come back out to go to work. So I'm like, what? So she like, yeah, just please just stay. You know what I'm saying? Just wait till they make them go back to the dorm. At least give me time to talk to my cousin, tell them don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, man. So y'all, I don't give a damn. Even though she put me on point. I don't care nothing about none of that. Just the simple fact that you even allowed that conversation and knew that your cousin was like, we're going to get Bill Bust too. Just on the strength that you didn't mash the gas on that right then and there, you a snake to me. So the dorm I'm in, I got a couple guys of mine that's in there. So I run to one of their room real quick. It's little gaps up under the door like this. I'm like, folk, give me a ratchet. Give me a ratchet, folk. So... He like, what's going on? I'm like, man, I'm about to hit the walk, but it might be looking funny. Just slide me a ratchet. So he slid me two of them. One of them was like real fat, like a rod, and the other one was a little flat piece. I slid them the flat piece back, and I took the rod. It's like that long, probably like that fat, but the end of it is real, real sharp and pointy. So I put it on me. I went back down. I said, man, pop the dough, man. She told me, oh, Bill, please don't go. I said, man, pop the dough, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was mad. I didn't even want to talk to her no more. So she popped the door, let me out. I mean, I left out the door and instantly went to clutch, grabbed it ASAP. So I bend the corner. I'm trying to bend the corner and look to make sure I don't see the unit manager out there. You know what I'm saying? Unit manager wasn't out there. 
So now I'm thinking about how dude was looking when I first went and started helping them cleaning up. I wasn't even paying no attention, but he was, I felt like I kept catching them looking at me. I know exactly who the dude is. And yeah, he will, he will, he will bust that pistol. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie and say he won't. He will. I've known him to do it a couple times. So I go to walking up there and I notice with him, like he'll be brushing the little concrete with the long brush. He'll look up, he see me brushing the concrete. Then one time he stopped, like he pulling up his pants, like he keep trying to tighten his belt. I'm too chain gang. I know you're adjusting the ratchet, trying to move it to an area where it's more comfortable for you. You know what I'm saying? So I just go walking straight, straight towards him, exactly to where he at. I ain't making no nothing. I'm just walking straight towards him. So he start like stepping over to the left while he cleaning it. Like he trying to get a little more closer to me. I'm still walking towards him. When I probably got about <clears throat> five or six feet away from him, he looked up to the area where the unit manager was at. She wasn't out there. It wasn't nobody on the walk right now, but like four of us. And that's all of us inmates cleaning up. He looked up to the area she was at and he looked back over to me. He like put the brush up against the beard and then went to light, acting like he adjusting his pants again. I instantly snatched the ratchet out. And he looked at me. He looking crazy. He talking about what you got going on. I'm like, nah, I know exactly what's going on. Ain't nothing going on. We might as well go on and do what we going to do now. And I charged him. And he took off running. I took off running behind him. We ran in a couple of circles a couple of times. And the whole time he trying to talk to me. Like, nah, bro. Hold on, bro. Them folk. I don't know what, what they got, man. They trying to set you up, man. So I stopped chasing him. He stopped. We probably about 10 feet away from each other now. He like, man, I ain't even with all that. I'm like, man, you capping. You were just finna try to squirrel me, bro. That what it is. You were finna try to squirrel me. And for y'all that don't know, no squirrel me just basically means sneak me. You were finna try to sneak me, but since you see I'm on point, now you don't want the smoke. You really a sucker. You really a coward. People like that is suckers. If you, you gonna try to sneak me so you can catch me down bad. But now that I'm on point head up, you don't want to do that. You is a real sucker. So I'm telling them like, bro, you is a sucker. You is a sucker. They like, nah, bro, I ain't with it. I ain't trying to do that, bro. Hey, man, I'm trying to go home, man. I'm trying to just do my time and go home, man. I'm like, all right, bro. So I walk off. I go back to the dorm. But, you know, I keep looking at him and stuff. I ain't finna go out bad. Went up there to the glass. I told the cousin. I cussed him out. I started saying all kind of stuff to him. I ain't gonna lie. I started threatening him, telling him I had somebody pull up to his house on the streets. All kind of stuff. woo de woo de woo had somebody spray his house up and his cousin house. I was, I was just so mad at that point because it's like, bro, y'all y'all are officers. I mean, I know it's crazy for me to say y'all are officers. Like, y'all supposed to be doing the right thing when I'm sitting here dealing with you in a way that we ain't supposed to be. But, bro, I didn't, I didn't see that coming out of that. I didn't expect to see y'all trying to get me bust because I didn't move quick enough on some foolery you know what i'm saying so that's why i just said uh some officers really officers period just ain't meant to be messed with bro you know what i'm saying i just feel like people should let them folk do their damn job and go on do their job and go home bro you know what i'm saying because that that that's a damn what if what if i wouldn't have went to that dorm and talked to old girl and she didn't kind of put me on point and then i'm just out there scrubbing Thinking I'm cleaning up, trying to see what's going on. You couldn't hit me in the neck or something. It hit a main artery. I fall, bleed out, die right here on the ground. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just glad, man, that it played out like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, eventually, probably like that very next week, old girl and old dude both quit. They both quit their job. Uh, I called old girl. I don't know if she blocked me or changed her number or what. I never even tried to call a dude back. And then I hit old girl on Facebook Messenger when I finally transferred. Probably like eight or nine months later, I transferred. I hit old girl on Facebook Messenger. And 
I guess she ain't recognized my picture. At first, she was talking to me like, who this? And when I told her who it was, she blocked me. And then old dude that was trying to, that was going to try to squirrel me and bust me, he ended up going to the hole. He put himself on the door because I guess he thought I was going to have the guys try to do something to him. He put himself on the door and went to the hole. And uh, he was in the hole for a couple months, like damn near a year. And then when I transferred and I got a phone at my next prison and I was talking to my guys down there at the prison I just left, they was like, yeah, he finally came out the hole. So I'm like, yeah, man, don't even worry about him. You know what I'm saying? He's a goofy. But, yeah, man, the moral of that was just some officers just just don't mess with them. You know, they just ain't meant to be messed with. And uh, like I say, y'all already know, man, I just give an account of my experience. I'm not talking about this type of stuff to try to make nobody feel like, oh, yeah, Bill did that. I'm like, no, that's not what we doing here, buddy. I was doing things that I had to do because I was uh, unfortunately placed in the situation, but that's something I never cherish, uplift, uh, you know, brag about none of that ever. That's what, It's certain stuff right now to this day I ain't never talked about on here simply because I know I got a big following of young people. And I don't want them to look at it like, like I'm like, dang, Bill, Bill had that, Bill, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just why. But that's it, man. It's your boy, Bill. I'm gone.